Welcome to the Cult of Comics podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Brown. Today is Sunday, March 21st, and I'm joined by my usual guys, gals, and whatever the hell Josh is in his screen. (laughs) Whatever. Whatever the hell Josh is identifying as today. Uh, Sean Walsh and Josh Craven. It's not nice, man. You identify as a father, as a witness protection program. Father, a son, a Holy Ghost. Ghost. Uh, Do you identify as the Holy Ghost this episode? Yeah. All right, do me a favor and change your pronouns in the... uh, in the in the thing here i just want to make sure that i'm being respectful um would it be that, too nope. offensive to change it to uh holy ghost why would that be offensive i don't know man everybody's gonna have something to be offended about it just happens welcome to the cult of comics podcast if you've never been on the show before welcome uh and thank you for giving us a chance um, we are a comic book media podcast, meaning that we have a discussion uh, every week about comics that we've read during the week, uh, comic book media, uh, such as the Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode that we just did, uh, which you can find on YouTube right now. And uh, we just kind of come on here, talk about whatever we wanted to read, what we wanted to ch- chit chat about. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be doing a conversation about our weekly reads. Uh, Sean, Josh, shout- oh, you actually did the change here. <laughs> Good for you. Good. Um, I don't know. I was told once that Joshua was, you know, a name derived from Jesus. Yes. Uh, Yahweh and Yeshua. Yeshua. I have actually heard that before. I think that is a religious name uh, or a name with religious yeah. connotations. Um, what do you guys want to talk about first? This has been an interesting week. We got a lot of. Yeah, uh, very, let's very... talk about the Snyder Cut. You know what? Let's identify that like right away. <laughs> <laughs> the Snyder Cut has obviously come out. It's been out for about four days now. Uh, I have not watched it. Um, Still Sean working has on watched... it. I've seen yeah. the first of six chapters. There's six chapters? Yeah. I thought there was only uh, four hours. Yeah, yeah, but they're not well, a full hour part one, each. Yeah, it's... I think the first uh, the first hour and eight minutes covers the first two parts. Okay. And yeah, because part I think I'm only like, like 45. Like chunk. Yeah, I'm only like 45 minutes in and I've just got to the end of chapter one. Part one is I... a subtitle. Part two doesn't have a title. Part three has a title. I'm really thrown off by that. Uh, I mean, so far, I... chapter one at least is identical to the actual cut. Like, Oh, I was told they uh, fixed... Uh... What is his name? They just they have guards, guards, stalling Brad, helter you skelter. What? Let's I'm spend two hours on. of just like dead <clears throat> silence. That's what we need. In a moment of silence, two hours of silence for the Snyder Cut for this terrible film. Okay, um, I'm not participating. No. So, so we actually have not uh, had the chance to actually finish it. I haven't even started it, uh, and. I'm kind of not really that interested in getting that done and out of the way. I actually, I was going to just get drunk and watch it, but I saw the CGI for Dark Side because I and I was like, because I'm just not interested. I've Dark, already got Snyder Dark Cut fans. Side, Dark Side looks significantly better from what I've seen than what I've seen of the movie so far. What, what is that, that I saw name? on social media has Steppenwolf. I, I messed the comment for, and the comment that I left was, man, the CGI looks like it's from like the 2000s. And hey, some of it got Snyder Cut fans just jumping down my throat because I just it's I don't really care if they if they hate me or not, but it's just it doesn't look that great. Um, and this is like seven million dollars for the project and something like that, right? I, I don't remember how, what the cost was, but I just remember that it was That's a it? lot of money. I thought well, it was more than that. He promised before it got announced, he was like, "Oh, the CGI is all done; it's ready to go." And then it was like Zack Snyder movie announced with budget to finish CGI, and it's Basically. like so he lied. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, because the Snyder Cut didn't up, exist. Is this guy's name Steppenwolf? Is that what the guy's yeah. the guy with the arm? Yeah. yeah. They, I was told they like his face was like a humanish he face really, beforehand. He looked really ugly in the theatrical cut, and he just looks like a he just looks like the destroyer from Thor one in this. Yeah. 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 It's weird. I don't know which I prefer because they're both bad. Okay. I was like, just told it was different. Yeah, the CGI is probably better with this one for his character, but just the design is worse. I mean, the pe- he looks like a penis. He I don't know like what penis looks penis. like that. 
<laughs> I've never seen a penis that looks like that. I've never well, seen a penis, never but maybe it penis. looks like this. I don't know. I, I've only seen like cats, a, man. Have you seen the um, the way his like neck elongates and he has that weird jawline? That's what I was thinking of. It looks like one of those weird penis turtles. I don't remember what the animal's called. I'll have to find it, but penis. Um, yeah, I've just been putting it off mostly because I actually want to experience joy and I just feel weird about watching and sit, sitting down and watching a four hour remake basically for a movie that came well, out only a couple of years ago, you know? Well, it's a 90 minute movie. This is the first time I've seen it. It's four hours. Like it's, I'm if sure. If your elongation lasts significant... longer than four hours, please consult a doctor. No. And I just want to add like, while I'm not positive on a movie so far, like I'm, I'm happy Snyder got to finish his movie. Like if he was treated badly behind the scenes, which sounds like he might have been, and sort of forced off it. I'm glad he got to like finish it his way. For, Sean, like, did yeah. you miss the uh, note at the start of the movie that says this movie will be presented in four to three ratio as intended by Snyder? Why? The, the aspect ratio is just disgusting. It's, it's boxy, just like the mother box. But why? Why four three? That's not even a theatrical like ratio. That doesn't even make any sense. I fucking hate Zack Snyder. I fucking hate Zack Snyder. He's a goddamn fucking idiot. And I'm fucking tired of people giving him so much credit. Every decision he makes is bad. We He's pride like, here's a great idea. I'm going to ruin it. With our po- we pride ourselves on our positivity. I don't give a fuck. Fuck, uh, fuck this. I, I, I tried to do all. so. I tried to be positive. I tried to say good for him. And then Tyler was like, no, fuck him. Because that pisses me off. Like, no, I saw like, the aspect ratio picture that you had sent. Yeah. No, listen, you're correct. I'm happy that he got the chance to tell the story that he did. Even if it sucks, congratulations. You got to tell your story, the way your shitty story. I'm happy for you. I'm happy your shitty story and your shitty film with all of your shitty fans went out there and it did shitty legwork for you. Think happy you thoughts. Think happy thoughts. But is there really anything going on like out um... here? In what? Stretching out the camera. Would there be anything out of it? If you, like, there's nobody over here. I mean, it reminds me of like always in the when they the film. So I think that that's like maybe an unintentional like, hey, let's just cut out Ray Fisher. Um, it reminds <laughs> me of like when they re-release Simpsons and I think Friends on like streaming services. They cropped it to widescreen, mm-hmm. and it just didn't look good. It, and, like, it Buffy loses as well. a lot. Yeah. 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 Th- yeah. But the thing is, when you have that ratio, that is because those are released on television, on boxy television, and they're like, this is the frame yeah. that they get. And the thing is now, nobody has a television with that aspect ratio anymore. Yeah. I still watch no. it on a television. Ooh. Wow. I don't know if they still need TVs. I my cable. <laughs> I just don't... I don't know. I'm eventually going to probably watch it, but I'm just like having to pace myself for the four hours of pain that I know I'm going to have to put myself through with it. And on that note, I guess we can talk about, well, do we want to do a Snyder Cut episode? Do we want to make a big, I mean, I'm going to go into a, like, just say, we'll, like, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll see how we feel if, when we finished it, if and when we finished it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So if you guys want to see something, have a conversation uh, or hear one of our conversations that is not full of toxic masculinity and slowed down bullshit with a director who doesn't know how to make a film you saying slow down bullshit on. there was so much slow motion in the first 45 minutes i knew so it much. Know how i knew because it's fucking Zack snyder yeah like this is a four-hour movie you could get it down to three easily if you just sped up the slow-mo <laughs> scenes <laughs> josh you know what i'm talking I about how it. much slow yeah, was do. there in that? uh th- some of the slow-mo threw me off uh when uh Queen uh, Hippolyta was escaping the uh, the uh, arena or whatever you want to call that. She's moving in slow motion, but all the rocks like falling down the side look like they were going in real time. It's weird. The CGI is it leaves a lot to be desired. I don't know. But, I have no idea what's going on. I'm yeah. completely lost. Yeah, I don't even know where I am right now. Um, what do you guys want to talk about for comics first? Well, we've got a few bits of news to just mention first. It's a light oh, week from news and comics, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Okay. So we've had a casting okay. in Secret Invasion okay. on Disney Plus, and it's not Ben Kingsley. Who is it? It's Kingsley <laughs> Benadir. Yes. He is an actor. I hope I'm is... getting that right. He was on Netflix's The OA. Um, he was in. Uh... Help me out here, Josh. You remember uh, it was the uh, Anna Kendrick film Noel. That's what it was. Yes, thank you. Um, he's a good actor. Yeah, yeah, I've I've seen some stuff with him in, and I've really enjoyed it. I'm I'm interested to see him uh, play whatever character he is. Um, what else is there for news? Uh, we've had casting for Naomi. We are getting K- Cassie, Casey, Walfall, mm-hmm. Walfall. What's Naomi? Uh, Walflam. Walflam. Um, Casey Walfall playing Naomi. Walflam. Um, so she's been in a few things. Very few things. Okay. Uh, she was in a TV series, Army Wives. She was in one episode of oh, Person of Interest. One episode of Power. <laughs> and a short movie. Oh, what man. Is Naomi. Um, it's a Bendis creation, like a young girl. You don't know what Naomi is? Oh, okay. I saw some of the posts. I didn't know what it was. Uh, I just Josh, saw, I'm not like, going to lie. I kind of so worry about now. you. I really do, man. I don't know if you even are, are even like here anymore. Are you in this realm? Oh, I'm shit. not in this, is this room. Because you're on, is this because you're on? You're in that uh, witness protection program thing? Can you only dip in and out of social media at a time? Like once every like, he gets, week? He gets all his news from us. So Naomi was a creation from a couple of years back from DC. If you remember, uh, she's a young black female who was adopted by two white parents in uh, Oregon. And she discovers that she was uh, brought over from another dimension. And the fallout of like why her powers are the way that they are. And the... it's very strange. She kind of has like a Superman-esque quality about her in the sense that she, yeah. you know, when... is... When she was introduced, I thought it was going to do that Bendis thing where he introduces a new black character and they replace the character. I didn't think okay. that just no, because I she stands alone, you know? Um, she did stand alone, good, but actually. Bendis has done that a few times now and he introduces a new yeah. black character and I was like, okay, she's going to be, she's going to move into Superman. But and it's Superman's not a character that... He, he usually is not the guy who's like, this is my replacement character for this character. He usually creates yeah. those new characters. It's very rare that he does the replacement thing that you find with a lot of studios. Um, this character is well written. I liked it. I liked that six issue storyline. It was very simple. Um, I'm interested to see what the sequel is going to be like. She's in the Justice League right now with Bendis, um, which I enjoyed. I thought it was going to be a lot more Bendisy. That felt like a lot less Bendisy in my opinion. But you know, we'll I, talk about that later. Re- yeah, we're talking about it. Um, do we want to talk about the Victor Bogdanovich uh, do answer job? Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, what now? Uh, DC price hike. So there's been some speculation or conversation going on right now. Bleeding Cool, who you should never trust ever because they're just bad. And they call them, so they say they're not journalists, air quotes. They're reporters, which if, if, if someone says that sentence, that just goes to tell you, how much of a buffoon they are because i am studying journalism and if you're studying journalism that means that and you work in journalism you are a reporter you you can't be a reporter and not a journalist that doesn't make any sense so bleeding cool has said that um there's going to be another dollar uh per issue price hike with uh, dc comics but there's been some uh contestation some argumentative bickering going on right now. Ryan Higgins apparently has said that that might be a... I'm sorry, was it Ryan Higgins or Kyle Higgins? Ryan Higgins. Ryan Higgins from the, the uh, Comic podcast. Conspiracy, yeah. Yeah, okay. Comics Conspiracy podcast uh, and store in California uh, has said that that probably is going to be a typo because it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. And he's a store owner, so he's probably going to know about these things more than anybody else. There has been uh, an extra dollar cost for cardstock variant covers uh for certain comics such as uh one of the cardstock variant covers for joker uh as well as one of the more recent uh batman comics that i can't think of oh no you know what it was a cardstock variant cover for action comics that had lex Luthor on the cover art by gary frank or not gary frank what's his name um 
He did the artwork on uh, New X Men with uh, Grant Morrison. Uh, Frank Quietly. Frank Quietly. Thank you very much. Oh. Um, yeah. So that has happened in the past. I don't doubt that eventually comics are going to start being a flat five dollars per issue at some point because they've just been increasing the prices, and that's something that we're just going to have to deal with because that's just inflation. Unfortunately. Remember in um, twenty sixteen when DC rebooted and they were like two ninety nine a comic. And yeah, the crowd so, went wild. You have to give them more credit than that because back in 2010, they said, actually it was 2008, drawing the line at 299 for years, they kept their comics at 299. Then they went up to 399. Then back in 2011, they went back to 299. Then they went back to 399 again for a little while. Then during rebirth, they brought it back up to, they went down to 299 per issue, releasing twice monthly. Then they only recently moved back up to three ninety nine a comic, releasing once monthly. Yeah, can confirm two new fifty two comics here, both two ninety nine. So, although I paid a lot more than two ninety nine for them. Yeah, we can give them as much shit as, as we want because I mean, no, I we have a right. To image can stay, stay at. Anything, but... If image can stay at four dollars, they can stay at four dollars. So actually, at least they're not doing the marble be... thing. That could be something, a measure of uh, protest. I wouldn't know if, I, I don't know what the inner workings of the industry looks like with this, but what I have seen is the reason why Image is able to maintain a lot of their price structure is because they are allowing the creators on the comic to be the ones who are in charge of the comic. You know, because it's an industry, it's a corporation with Marvel and DC, you have people who are getting paid for just working at the publishing house for editing coloring blah 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 but with image each individual house and each individual book is that published house image just puts it out and then has the brand on it that's all they do like don't get me wrong they're in charge of like have they have a guy who's in charge of publishing uh there's a guy who's in charge of uh trade paperbacks etc but i mean you have skybound top cow image does it completely differently than everybody else and they do it with no advertisements uh, only advertisements that you see are for image, other image comics and image products. That's it, which is really smart. DC has started doing this as well. Marvel has refused to remove their um, solicitations inside of the comics themselves. I still see random advertisements here and there. For what do you, you know, God what do you what. mean DC does this as well? DC has sort of self advertising inside of their comic books. Yeah, yeah, they do that. Yeah. So now instead of constantly seeing you know Kia advertisements or something. Like I've got a Marvel no, book. No, I in think front of DC me. still does it. Like I still see Snickers advertisements. That is because they have had a um, multi-year uh, signed solicitations and advertisement deal that they've had since 2010, something like that. Um, I'm actually looking at the a Marvel book in front of me right now, and I think the only non-Marvel advertisement I'm seeing on here is an M&M's advertisement, and everything else is the music emporium from Disney. Um, uh, M&M's, yeah. sponsor us please Yeah <laughs> oh, I'm just man. surprised I mean everything else is an advertisement for other Marvel comics, Marvel products, Disney products um, Yeah but here's the thing Disney and Marvel are just such a powerhouse Now they don't need to advertise the money That's true and I think that that's funny Because that means that they don't need to Necessarily keep these things at $3.99 an issue Or is $5 the, for number one What's on the back page? Of that comic, you on just the back of this, the back is cover. the music yeah. emporium thing. Yeah. Oh, okay, I was because right I was going to say about the barcode right being on the front. <laughs> yeah, they could change that. Um, I understand that there's going to get. Here's the problem. Unfortunately, this is this is the problem with the nerd culture is that there's <laughs> always going to be out this just soft weak people who get outraged online and they want to write their tumblr posts and fucking fight hey, people. Man. Is, and... is tumblr still a thing it is it's me just that, like honest... that. <laughs> everybody who used to be on tumblr left tumblr because they got rid of all the porn on tumblr and now they're over yeah. on Twitter. bring back the now... porn yeah i know that's what i'm trying dude i'm trying so no, i just hard think of uh the tumblr. uh the Scrubs episode, you know, if they took away all the porn, there'd just be one website. It'd be bringbacktheporn.com. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I obviously have been suspended from my account because I made fun of Queenie's husband, who looks like a 99-year-old carcass. 
Uh, and apparently I was inciting violence against him. So I don't know what's going on on Twitter anymore. All I know is that people are freaking out because of Snyder Cut. Um, what do you guys think about this whole like dollar hype nonsense? It doesn't affect me too much. I don't get too many uh, DC comics. Yeah, you really don't, man. I mean, most of the stuff you collect is independence. Yeah. I bet, I bet if they charge $9.99 for Batman Beyond issue, you'd soon kick off. Yeah. Well, yeah, at that point, when it starts to affect me, sure. Yeah. Here's here's a good comment that I heard from Ryan Higgins, because uh, I follow his podcast. Um, we all said at one point that we were not going to buy the comics when they went up to $2.99. We all at some point said we are not going to buy the comics when they go up to $3.99. We all said that we, the same thing when they went up to four ninety nine, and what if it goes to six seven dollars? We're still going to be buying it because we're fans. So we have a dedication to these things, but I've, I, I imagine that there has to be a threshold for some people. Yeah, at, at some point. Yeah, like the dollar increase won't really hit me too much because I've just changed to like some of my subscriptions to a different store because I was getting it like a little over a little above half price of what i was paying before mm -hmm. so even with this extra price hike i'm still gonna be paying like a third less than i was before for my comics okay so yeah won't affect me too much it's not but really gonna affect me it's... too bad either but yeah i mean but like marvel does a thing where they charge like 5.99 for an issue one yeah, then, they've been doing that. And they're oversized. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. If you give me an absolute car, it's still just like, black they're like, one, this is going to sell big. really well. So we're going to make as much money on this as possible. I don't understand some of the decisions that they make with some of them, because in the case of like Amazing Spider-Man 850, which was square bound. Thank you, Marvel, for actually doing that. Thank God. Um, that was an oversized celebratory issue that they only sold for like $7.99. So they can sell these things for a good, decent amount of pages for a decent price without it being crazy. And it can be square bound. But there is a, there's a point where it becomes too expensive. The print or? Just to, for customers to buy. Like if okay, they charge well, much more than seven nine nine for an issue, customers at that point would start going, that's a $10 book, Jesus. Yeah. Okay, let me, okay. So here's my thought. Ultra Mega was seven ninety nine this week, and I bought it, not knowing it, it was square bound. It was a double and sized I'm, issue, wasn't it? It was a huge book, and James Heron said in the back of the book, you know, hey, I didn't intend for this to be as big as it is, but I, I just didn't want this to be a, a rushed story. I wanted to tell my story within that first chapter, the way I wanted to tell it, and they let him do it. Skybound let him do it, and I I was really impressed with it. It was a really good book. I am um, definitely going to read it at some point. I just ran out of time this week. I'll read it before issue two comes out. Uh, when we get to the actual re weekly readings, I, I'm really excited to talk to you about it. Yeah. Um, the, I, I think that if you give me a handful of books a month that are square bound, six to seven dollars, and they're big black label size books, or, you know, those oversized square bound books i'm down to buy those i don't have an issue with that i'm actually really excited about like my collection of oversized uh golden age comic size comics that i have from black label right now including the other history of the dc universe um you know question i like that stuff i i like having but my collection if more every single issue for... if every single issue was the oversized overpriced format like no, well, stuff I, would have to get dropped. Like right now, it's absolutely. a premium. It's a premium product, and it gets the premium I think that, format. I yeah, they're think experimenting with a right couple now, different styles. Yeah, they are. Yeah, and image is coming with the uh, you know straight to graphic novel comics. Yeah, from yeah. Brie Baker and Phillips. Yeah, they're trying new things here and there, and I'm for it. I, I want Brie Baker to have that chance to do yeah. the graphic novel formats that are being released th two to three times a year. I want we're them get, to have a chance to see to... these. Yeah, we're getting to see oh, these yeah. creators experiment with the format and do yeah. stuff Rutgers, the way they want. Uh, Lazarus, Risen. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a three times a year comic. Jesus. So well, much they back have to for that. Yeah, they have to because of the artist, because he's getting up there in age and he's been having some health issues. So, I mean, he has to take more time with it. So, 
that makes sense too. You know, when you give me Amazing Spider-Man coming out twice a month, I don't expect them to do that. But I am, I am very curious to see them throw me a good, solid cover that is hard, that is going to be secure in my collection for a long time, and one that I can fit in a bag and board because that's that's what I care about doing with my collection. I mean, any you can bag and board, you know, even the uh, the Joker comic that came out, and that was those were what fifty pages each. That was a big cover. That was our yeah, big issue. Those yeah. those were big. I could still bag and board those. So, oh yeah. I mean, those bags. Yeah, I think hold a lot. Joker was maybe forty pages. Ultra I Mega don't think was it was yeah. like 80 pages and I was able to fit in a bag and board, but yeah, I've got my like action comics yeah, and detective comics. Those 20 page board, which DC pages. Or, the 20 page DC or Marvel, those things just slide right in. Doesn't even touch yeah. the sides. Like a no, glove. Not, at all. not even like a glove. It's yeah, like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. like Tyler's asshole. <laughs> just like, I wish, man. My poops are scary right now. If only, man. If you only knew. If you, you gotta only cleanse, how man. long my... I try to, but apparently you're not supposed to do that too often. It's very bad for you. Yeah, I don't know, man. Have some fun. I talk to poop specialists. I'm in the, I'm in the Midwest. We just eat stuff. <laughs> it's like ratatouille. You're... We're just like the rest of the rat family. <laughs> uh, what's next for news? Um, free comic book day has been moved to August. August 14th. Yep, August 14th. It's usually the yeah. first Saturday in May. And they have said we're going to go all the way back there to August. Yeah, maybe there's a lot of great that, stuff coming. Yeah, they're probably hoping that the pandemic has sort of died down by that point, and they can get more people to the stores and that kind uh, of thing. There were some things in the free comic book day. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that looks good, uh, but there are some things where it's a preview for a comic that's going to be already out by the time it comes out. Like yeah, I don't think I think this is a very recent decision to move it to August instead of May. They probably were testing the waters to see if the pandemic was going to get, uh, you know, even itself out, or if people were going to get more vaccinations. And I think that we're all kind of just waiting for things to come back to some level of like normal, yeah. actual normal, instead of the new normal. It's it's. Yeah. Uh, but they, uh, you know, you might expect things to be back June, July, but they punted it all the way to august yeah well let me ask you guys something here it, let's say that you guys do get vaccinated and they suddenly decide that they're going to do free comic book day and it's traditional month of may and there's a bunch of going to be a bunch of crowds of people let's say that people are even wearing masks would you go sure they probably well i would probably go i'd hope that people are you know keeping their Still distance and whatnot yeah Probably go early just to be there at the start and there wouldn't be as many people. This is the issue with trying to prepare for these things, right? Is because it's always when we get to ABC goal, it's always, it's when we get to that, that we want to be able to get to that point. So it's when we get to that point that we can start having these things, you know, fall back into place. But when you keep hoping and just like, anticipating the absolute best outcome instead of really just expecting the worst you're just going to keep falling short and you're constantly going to be making decisions like this which is like okay well we're two months away from free comic book day we're just going to have to put it off until august at this point it's just an unfortunate thing but i think that we need to start making more preemptive steps i mean my school for example made the decision three months ago like hey we're going to make spring summer fall all online like we're making that decision now because we just don't know what's going to happen with the pandemic. Yeah. And then the CDC comes out and says that schools are going to allow three feet distance between students and desks, which is funny. Um, I just think it's going to be a long time before we have any level of normal when it comes to this stuff. I mean, it's going to be a long time until I get back. I get to go back to a con before I get to go a food drive for at my local comic book store i mean even the guys that i talked to over in my store have said we're not going to have any number of crowd of people until at least all of our employees get vaccinated but then i just talked to them recently that's good for your like it's good for a business to take that stance a local business they've been taking such good stances i'm, I'm happy for them but yeah. now that phase two and phase three is occurring 
more people are coming out, more people are knocking on the doors. People are coming in and saying, hey, when are you guys going to open up? And they're like, well, we have no choice now because if we don't start doing this, we're probably going to lose the business. I mean, yeah. they've been doing a really good job staying in business, doing uh, local deliveries for free and shipping comics to people worldwide. And they've been doing great on that, just maintaining business. But I've been inside of their store. They still put stuff out on the shelves and it's still new issues just stack everywhere. And that's because you don't get that normal foot traffic of random buyers who are just like, hey, I'm looking for this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the unfortunate thing. They're going to have to get rid of so many materials. They're going to have to start putting up like windows, you know, removing the uh, pinball machines. But Oh, yeah. no, not the pinball machines. I like pinball. I've got two stores that I go to regularly. One store, they'll, you know, just order a ton of stuff. When, you know, when Berserk, Berserker came out, they had those, you know, one in 25, one in 50 variants. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're like, you can get that for, you know, you want the regular cover? Sure. But we got all these covers over here. You can have that for cover price. And they had, you know, stacks of them, you know, mm-hmm. 20 or 30 of each. They had to have ordered, you know, thousands of issues to get that many, you know, of the variant covers. Yeah. Whereas your, I go your to your shop's responsible for it selling six hundred thousand copies. I that shop is <laughs> the other shop that I go to that pulls my comics. They uh, basically order as much as everybody has put in their pre-orders for, and then they order a couple more on top of that, and that's it. Um, I think that the last time I had an actual free comic book day was at the store that I went to back in Seattle. And that's where I got, they used to have these really awesome deals. I don't know if they, they're going to be doing it this year. Um, they haven't, they didn't do it last year uh, where you, they, you could just go in, bring a box and you could just like fill it up with a bunch of cool stuff, like whatever you can find for uh, loose back issues and then just buy that box for like 10 bucks. Oh yeah. Yeah. Love that shit. That's, that shit is my jam, man. Those sales are the best. Then COVID hit and then. 93 less comic book stores in a single year. 93 closed. Mm. So fortunate. Um, for the last bit of news, um, I just wanted to let everyone know about a uh, quick change in the lineup for Donny Kate's Thor. Um, Nick Klein will still be doing some of the artwork, but uh, Alessandro Vitti, uh, who is an artist that I have not seen in a long while. He was uh, on Red Lanterns back in 2013, 2014 um is going to be joining them on the team uh and that apparently jim lee made a comment about possibly doing a justice league snyder cut comic book sequel that could happen with quote fan support um but that's also a speculative like hypothetical could happen thing and not much else uh has come from that and it's just it's it doesn't seem like a very realistic thing but i just wanted to throw that in there for the news um, anything else you guys wanted to add? Uh, no, that's pretty much all we've got for news. Cool. Yep, shall and, we jump in? Yeah, straight into comics. So let's go in cool. straight to Radiant Black number two by Kyle Higgins and Marcelo Costa. Marcelo. What did you guys think? First pretty things good. first, I love this cover. It's a great cover. It is so nice. And like the colors on yeah. the first one are great. And like this one's a wraparound as well. Yeah. Yeah. I I was torn on which cover to get. Always yeah, uh, main. Cover with, Always main. With the red. I know, but the red one looks so cool. I don't think I've seen the variant. The, the variant was uh, the red guy coming out of the bank, I think. Oh, yeah, okay. cool guys don't look at explosions. <laughs> Can you imagine just walking away from explosion, just being like, man, I hope this looks cool. It's every single time. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I kind of felt like this was not uh, as strong as number one. This had a lot of really strong parts, but I definitely felt like the sequence where the main character runs into Mr. Red yeah, in the junkyard. I felt like that was kind of rushed, and I that just was I felt the, like the pacing. That was probably the weakest part. But on the whole, I really I love this issue. Yeah, I thought I the conversation between him. Or two. Yeah, I think the conversation between him and his dad was really good both times. Yeah, um, I thought that the interaction with the police was good. That, um, yeah, that, I, I like that a lot more. 
yeah i like that they seemed it seems like they're gonna become recurring characters and that's not what i yeah. expected after issue one yeah, yeah me neither. They, the plot moved along a lot this issue yeah yeah kinda... i i really like the art of this issue as well there are a few pages that were honestly like beautiful dude you've got like just... this the scene that like the uh was it like it's like a movie theater but it's a video store inside it's a, it's a comic book movie theater yeah like just the sort of colors on that page look really nice and yeah. then there's a I scene love... where um that sounds awesome i just had this great idea for a, how that would look on the inside for a comic book movie theater that's fucking great yeah and like just this like panel up here, just the way the shadows are and the colors, it just looked mm-hmm. really nice. Yeah. No, move the page. Look at the page next to that. That is like yeah. Robert Kirkman style right there. I like, thought yes. exactly. It reminds me of the uh, Invincible page where he had that comic right. Yeah. It was like, oh, we just reuse artwork to save. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But every panel this, was different in this. Like the this faces definitely, were different. This definitely feels like uh invincible meets power rangers and yeah, i think I that's think what that's, it was described as <laughs> yeah and i think that this and it's plays, very apt yeah it's very it, in some cases it can be a strength and in other cases it can be a downfall because when you're continuously comparing one story to another that doesn't really allow those that's that first story to stand on its feet and i want this book to carry itself on its own and i hope that it gets to that yeah. point i'm looking forward to see how it's going to progress um, yeah. I guys, agree that this you guys compared it to Kirkman and I do think that's a good comparison because while reading this book all the characters feel very human mm-hmm. and that's something I always praise Kirkman for is Mostly, no matter how many characters yeah. he's writing like he's, he'll have this like huge massive cast and every character Marshall's feels human a bit, Marshall's a little bit larger than life yeah but we, we all know a guy like that but it's very over the top yeah, mm-hmm. maybe not to that extent, but I still I see people I know in him when I was reading it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love all of like the little Easter eggs or shout outs. Yeah, uh, he wakes up. I, I know, he yeah. wakes up in his room, and there's the memento poster, but it's called yes. Your Memories. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, he yes, says, yes. you know, he wakes up floating. It's like, has anybody seen the Keymaster? I love that. That was my favorite part of the comic, honestly. Yeah. Um, There's the page in the comic book movie theater. There's lots of little tiny things in there. I definitely is... agree with uh, the the description about Clark Gregg. He's pretty good. Yeah. You know what that uh, sequence reminded me of? It reminded me of every single time uh, Invinci- in Invincible when Mark would go into the comic book store and talk about Science Dog. I loved that. Yeah. I love those little conversations. Um. I want more stuff like this, you know, because this is, as much as I love... This is rumored know, like, to be starting a new superhero universe akin to Invincible. I kind of don't want that to be the case, necessarily, because I don't want more university stuff. Like, no, but if it's cool. Yeah, but if it's kind of like these individual things where Higgins might oversee it and, like a character will pitch him and it's like, okay, this can take place in this world, but it still stands yeah. alone. Mm. I don't, it depends on how it's handled. Invincible, Invincible didn't really start a universe. They just decided no. that all these different stories take place in the same universe. Yeah. yeah so like, oh, yeah, you got Tech Invincible. Jacket, that can take place yeah. here. You know, you got Battle, you know, Kirkman was like, oh, yeah, I have Battle Pope and Science it Dog. Was, like, yeah, we can... It was originally going to be like a typical superhero book where he would leave the book at some point and the writer was going to take over. Yeah. But it got to a point and he was like, actually, these are my characters. I'm finishing this. Fuck you guys. This is mine. You make me take these home. I take them home. (laughs) So if that was going to happen, I think that's cool. I just, the reason why I think that this is strong right now is because it's allowing something that's familiar to be expressed in a way that feels more realistic and believable. And I feel like that kind of feels like an eighties or nineties movie in some regard. And I like that. I want to see what happens next. I want growth and I'm ready to see some immediate growth right away. The thing about like, I, the thing, the issue that I have is that I need more patience when it comes to delayed uh, reward versus like the immediate reward, because 
I recognize that these things are going to be coming out monthly, and I recognize that this is going to be something that's going to take a little while to get used to these characters, to get used to this universe. Um, I guess I just want something that's going to hook me to the point where I just go, this is the book that makes me go, this is, this is, like, this is the thing that we all need to be reading all the time. And maybe I hold things to too high of a tier in that sometimes, but I guess I'm just waiting for that moment right now. I'm still really enjoying it. Yeah, I think you said about growth is I think we did see a little bit of growth from the character in this issue, even though it maybe wasn't for the reasons you would want. Like he admitted to his dad that like, oh, like the right thing's not going anywhere. I'm going to keep doing this driving thing. But it was yeah, because that's... of his superhero antics, how he used that to like investigate. His Which conversations I actually, I actually with really his... liked. Yeah. There's a whole subplot thing going on here about work and finding a job and putting in the time for things. Uh, there's the, you know, back at the, uh, movie theater, comic book shop, they got the saw, the, the marquee out front, you know, now starring CB, CBD oil, you know, all those yeah. businesses that have to supplement by selling CBD oil and other products. There's so much American businesses that are, that are forced to do that at this point, because they just have to try to like sell everything in order to survive. Like you go into an yeah. FYE and they sell candy and plushies now and you're just like, I guess. And like comic shops, they make most of their money off like pop toys and stuff. I know, you know right? Like the merchandise. It's just a lot. Yeah. And I get it, but I mean, at least with that, I can understand that that's collectibles and that's tied somewhat to these yeah. things. And, like and if you try to sell wrestling... Work as a, he's got to work as an Uber driver. If you sell wrestling pops, you know, as in a comic book store, I just think that that's weird. I just, it strikes me as strange i don't understand when people try to force like things into their sales i don't know um i'm still enjoying it i'm still really i I praise the writing style right now and i'm looking forward to the next couple of issues i like that each issue has its own name i didn't notice what was named this best issue better off red Hmm. it says ish like a chapter cover it says issue number two title better off red Right on. Uh, I mean, they definitely issue, have titles for chapters. Yeah. Next issue, title, writing day. Mm. Okay. 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 Don't wash on my uh-huh. bench. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Don't mind us. We're just being weird on the podcast here. Welcome. <laughs> you're, you're weird. Always. I mean, are we, we, is this new news? Hopefully you didn't just so. like jump to this point and be like, no idea what's going on. <laughs> Just us making noises at each other like chimps. Um, shall we go into Nightwing? Yeah, so Nightwing number 78 by Tom Taylor and Bruno Redondo. Bruno Redondo on the art with this. Oh my God, it was so good. Yeah, no, this yeah. was wow, this was a great issue. Yeah, this is <laughs> so good. Blow out my asshole. <laughs> Just, yeah, I... like, the, the artwork, like I'm just going to say like first off, that's like the title page of him jumping off the crane. Oh, was cool. you could frame that. You really could. It's so good. Um, there's a lot of strengths in the storytelling style with this. I like that this felt like I get to see superheroes being superheroes and not, you know, fighting with other superheroes or yeah, um, some hacked like oh, look how dark they are, kind of. Like, this is just Nightwing going around, doing good deeds, and... Yeah, uh, and this saving definitely... Saving a puppy. <laughs> exactly, it's so good. It's so good. It I, reminds, I it reminds it. me of a lot of Taylor's friendly neighborhood, Spider-Man. Yes, absolutely. Um, because he, he writes I, his characters with heart, and, like, he will put, like, heart at the center of his story. So whether the story fails to deliver on it, but, like, the, the character investment will be there. Sure. I, I think that Tom Taylor is unafraid of adding some very brutal stuff in his story. I mean, they pointed a gun at a puppy. Yeah, it's really like a puppy, puppy at that, you know? Yeah. And it's like, not like people way like to make that you hate the bad guys. Yeah, right? Like, that's very ham fisted, but I don't know that that makes sense to me necessarily to say, oh, well, there's a well known, established superhero, superhero, hero, whatever. Of Bloodhaven, I'm gonna point a gun at a puppy in front of him. I don't know if that was any kind of a smart choice. I feel like enough people at some point would be like, "Hey, I'm not gonna be a, yeah. act a fool," you know. But 
it's still um, it's still it delivered the emotion that uh, was uh intended for me i was like man i fucking hate these guys oh right do you know <laughs> that's what he wanted tom taylor has revealed the name of the dog on or like the temporary like intermediate name of the dog on twitter do you want to know what it I, is yeah please what is it bite wing you love that, don't lie. No, you love I it. I hate it. I, like I it. hate it so much. It's so <laughs> cheesy. Uh all right. What did you think about the uh, interaction with Babs in the apartment, and then the reveal of the letter? Um, regarding Babs, like the little panel where she sees the dog, and it's got a speech bubble, just heart in it. That just the heart. I love favorite. that so much. Yeah, <laughs> that's so, so good. Like, yeah, um, I really like it. It does feel like a bit of a cop out having Alfred leave billions of dollars to Nightwing because, oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah. Bruce is now broke, he lost all his money in Joker War, but Alfred no, left his uh, will okay. to Dick, and he's like, Oh, like, as like, oh, I prefer the... the original uh Nightwing where his parents died and had all that money, and then he's just like, Oh, yeah, all that you know, interest really paid off. Um, well, he mentions uh, that as, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, I think he's just kind of used up that money with his superhero antics. Yeah. But uh yeah, um he's reading Alfred's will and it's like as Master Wayne's legal guardian, I was given a large amount of stock which I invested, like yeah. Um and he was like, I live simply looking after Master Bruce, I didn't need a lot of money. And yeah, so I invested it grew interest, like it's just gone on. and Dick gets really... nothing. Yeah. None of the other you characters know, get anything. <laughs> that kind of makes sense to a regard because if you have somebody who is the dad to one of the wealthiest families in the nation, maybe the world, yeah, and you have access to those funds, they're not just going to look at you and be like, oh, we're not going to give it to the butler. It's like, no, he's the legal guardian. Of course, he's going to have some say in the yeah. money. Probably a lot of the say in the money. Yeah. Cause... I, just, I just love like Dick's reading this and he's like, a billionaire was serving me sandwiches. I, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That was yeah. great. He's he's just been a Jedi this whole time. He doesn't have material <laughs> once. You know what I was thinking when I read that part of the comic was, I kept thinking I, every time they refer back to like, oh, by the way, Alfred's dead. I'm always like, oh, right. Like it actually does yeah. like come back into my mind, and then I'm like, I have to be reminded sometimes because I'm like, oh, right, he actually still is dead. Like, I still don't like it. Back. I don't know how to feel. I'm like, okay, look, I want my characters to have loss and experience like what it is to actually be human. But Alfred's just... my like one of, if not my like one of, if not my favorite DC character. Understandable. I mean, he's a fascinating like, character. He's I just don't great. like, and it's just like the humor, like the wit with him, like he's enjoyable to read. Mm -hmm. He will have limited presence in an issue, but still, like the one page he's on will be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing I want to mention is the colors in this issue is great. Oh my god! Yeah, it's using a, um, and Andreo Lucas, Andriano that, Lucas. That makes sense uh, because I think I've seen their work with Bruno Redondo before. Yeah, definitely okay. they did. Um, Suicide Squad, Squad together. Yeah. Uh, okay. 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 Did you ever get around to reading that? Um. Yes, I did actually. I thought I told you that I finished it. I don't read your messages. I don't listen to you. You're a cunt. <laughs> um, um, move on? Yeah. The, yeah. Um, so we've got Justice League by Brian Michael Bendis, David Marquez, Ramby, and Zamanico. So I think that we all know on this show that uh, Sean is a massive hater who just powers down haterade every day. Just feeding that acid, massive, massive, massive. Yeah, me with my hate raid. <laughs> Just chugging it down. Drink it. Count, drink it. <laughs> As he crushes the can. Uh, especially when it comes to Bendis, because he just doesn't like things that have joy or are well written. But in this issue, that's right. I, I called you out. That's right. Well written. So crazy. Well written. <laughs> what did you think? Because you I... messaged me at like four in the morning, being like, Tyler. Four in the morning you for you. Wanted Time you difference know. is a thing. I may have enjoyed this. Yes. I liked some of this. 
I do have a big problem with part of it. Yeah, please tell me. Go ahead. The massive demon thing is the most Bendis character I've ever written. I, ever he read. really is. I was thinking that when I was reading that. <laughs> like this big demon from hell shows up and he's like, it smells fantastic here. Who, what's your name? And it, it, it's just... it. It's a Balrog was nice. Yeah, it's a Balrog <laughs> it was written by Bendis. <laughs> so, a couple things. I want to point this out really quick, actually. Um, it is a Bendis creation, the guy, uh, and it actually comes from the Naomi universe, um, and they have identified that at the end of the What's issue. Where they say, yep. like, hey, this is the same energy spectrum that comes from Naomi, and that's why they, that's how they introduced, like, oh, we need to go, like, track her down, and then... Um, jumping way too far ahead black adam ends up like hunting her down too because that's where that demon shows up is in kondak um which i thought that he wasn't in charge of anymore but apparently he's still in charge uh, of kondak i was confused about that because i thought that a while back that he lost um control of uh power over kondak as far as i'm aware he unless i didn't read that i don't know i don't know um, last couple of years at least he's still as far as i was aware okay i don't know i like this i think that my favorite part about this is the interaction between green arrow and superman talking about how green arrow was asking like i don't like why we should be doing more don't you think we should be doing more and superman's like it's all i think about but i love that i like the idea but like this is a team who's been together for like a long time and superman's like i always think we should be doing more and it's like well you never really tried to do more like when have you ever brought the team together and been like, gang, we need to do more? Well, that's not necessarily true hey, because guys. Superman has said before, like, hey, you know, I think that we should start expanding out with different team members. We should be spanning, um, you know. Yeah. Line. Also, but the thing is um, that this is also a comic that's trying to cover its bases. Yeah. You know, if you're having a character and you have this 80 year issue that's never been addressed, of course they're going to have one issue where they're like, yeah, hey, we're going to address that issue. Um, I've got two little nitpicks with the art. Okay. Um, so the first is the two-page spread where Aquaman's about to stab Demon Boy. Mm -hmm. Um, there's two panels which should be swapped around because Arthur's like looking at him and he's like, "Uh oh!" And then the next panel's him like swing his thing, and then the third panel is like him starting to blow up. Yeah, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. That was those two panels need to be switched. That was a weird choice to do that in the panel, but I gotta say, this is Dave Marquez at his absolute best. This is some of the yes. best faces he's ever done. This is some of the best anatomy that he's yeah. ever done. The artwork is really good, and I do have a second nitpick with the art. Someone needs to tell Bendis because I assume it's a mandate from Bendis that Barry Allen is not a redhead. Why would he be the one to determine that? Because Every time Barry Allen has shown up in a Bendis book for the last couple of years, he has been a redhead. I I mean, we can probably end up looking at some of his scripts because some of his scripts end up being online, but I just... Barry Allen showed up in mandate. Man of Steel and he was a redhead. He showed up mm -hmm. at another point and was a redhead and then in this he's a redhead. And it's just a very weird choice that like... It could just be an Isn't Barry artist. Allen blonde? Yeah, but he's a redhead in this. And every other time mm -hmm. he's shown up in a Bendis book. And like you could blame it on like an artist mistake, but like it's just weird that it's always happening in a Bendis book. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's like, did Bendis just watch the Justice League TV show and be like, okay, the Flash is redhead? And you know what it is? It might be that. Um... Wait, isn't Wally West a redhead? Yeah. So that might be what the issue is. There might be some confusion like there from some of the artists. Yeah, but or the... Every time he's shown up in another book, there's been no mistake with the hair color. It's only mm -hmm. the Bendis books, which is just very strange. Okay. Um, damn you, Bendis. Even damn you, Bendis. Not him. <laughs> yeah, I, I did I like actually, a lot of this issue. It was just the demon that I was like, this is, this is I don't too mind Bendis. It. I'm actually, I'm interested to see where this is going to go forward because I feel like this is going to be, when Bendis invests into characters, you notice it dramatically more so. Like, Ruggles are, I was really disappointed to see it, like, didn't really go very much anywhere. Everyone was like, disappointed. It, it was, three different times he was utilized and he's a great character i'm fascinated by him he was using legion of superheroes which i just finished um twice in the superman storyline first in man of steel and then later on in the actual superman book itself and i loved all the fights and all the interactions but i guess i was just hoping to see more of it um 
this I can tell he has a little bit more care about what's going to happen with Naomi and her universe and what's going on with that. Yeah. I think that Naomi is a character that he has created for his daughter, one of his daughters. He, yeah, he did say that. Yeah, he has. And I think that that's before. really cool. And yeah, I think that's absolutely. that's something that uh, should be cherished in a way. And I, I can br- appreciate the fact that he's going to give that much love into this character. Because that means it's going to be a good storytelling experience. I don't think there's going to be any half-assed, like half-handed anything with it. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, I'm confused by how much Bendis has written about uh, Green Lantern stuffs. Like he did a whole thing about Gold Lantern and Legion of Superheroes and the uh, Guardians of Oa. He did a whole thing with Teen Lantern. He's done multiple things with some of the other side characters. And at this point, I'm just wondering what's going on with that because Jon Stewart isn't in this yet. And I want to see what he's going to build towards as a Green, as a Green Lantern fan. I, I just want get to that point now. Give it to me. <laughs> um, so going let's move on to, to the, the, yeah, the Justice League dark part. I have one thing I want to call out before anything else. Okay lazy writing on the part of Ram V. Constantine would not say Z. He would not call Zatanna Z. He would call her Zed. No, he wouldn't hit say Z. Really? I can picture Matt Ryan saying Z and I can't picture him saying Zed. Yes. Why? I don't care about Matt Ryan. I'm talking about the character. I know Matt that Ryan Matt Ryan does a really... I understand that Matt Ryan has this, done the this best whole, Constantine. This whole book, he's called her Z, even when Tynan was writing. It's just his thing for now. I, I get that now, but I'm just saying that if you have a character who's fucking Cockney, why wouldn't he say Zed? He's, he's not Cockney. Yes, he is. He's not Cockney. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Yes, he is. I will fucking fight you. Okay, let's do it. Google it. Okay, Google I'll where he's from. Go. I'm going to right now. Let me know when you call right it up. Right now on tell, the show. Like, my hands are here. I'm not Googling it. I can tell you exactly where he's from and what dialect he uses. Say it. Scouse, Liverpool. All right, because you fucking hate Liverpool accents. <laughs> it's impossible. Like, Jesus Christ. The worst Liverpool accent I ever experienced. I was in a subway and they asked what type of bread I wanted. They said it four times before I finally understood it. <laughs> All right, hang on. I'm, I found the character. All right. Fictional biography, youth, uh, originally from Liverpool, Lancashire, now Merseyside, and yep. Northampton. And Oh, he lives in Northampton. That's where Alan Moore's from. That would make sense, right? Yeah, because Alan Moore created him. I could have sworn he was Cockney. No. Because, um, shit, what's his name? Idris Elba. Idris Elba's Cockney? Yes. Yeah. I don't know what point you're trying to make. They're different people. Idris Elba isn't Wait. Constantine. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hang on a second. Explain something to me then. Why is it that Matt Ryan does a Cockney accent when he uh, does the uh, impersonation? Matt Ryan does a Welsh accent because he's from Swansea. Well, I know <laughs> anything about accents. Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is live on air, guys. Me just being a dumbass. Yeah, Matt Ryan does a Swansea accent from Wales. I don't even know what Swansea is. I don't even know what that is. It's a city and it's a town or city in Wales where he's from. That does not sound Welsh. It is. I, I'm from the UK. I can guarantee you it is Welsh. It doesn't sound Welsh to me, but all right. Every time I hear okay. Welsh, I always... Well, we went on that massive tangent and it turned out it was for nothing because Tyler was wrong. <laughs> I just once again, here we go. Hey, here I am. Look at me on the show. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna acknowledge it. I'm fucking wrong. I could have sworn he was cockney. All right. Uh well you're, on that you're note, a cockney. What so what did you think of Matt Ryan's Justice League Dark? What did I think of Matt Ryan's Justice League uh, Dark? Ram V. It's, I'm tired. I've been at work. Uh, I thought it was really fucking depressing that Merlin is such a cunt, um, but I'm definitely interested to see what uh, is going to move forward. Yeah. Like, yeah, this was really good. And the first, like, 28 issues of the Justice League Dark series, even though, like, Tyne and Ramby 
very different parts. It was all one cohesive story. So now this mm-hmm. is starting something new with these characters, and it's a really strong start. I would agree. I definitely wish that I knew more about the relationship between Constantine and uh, Zatanna. Read Tynan and Ramvi's Justice League Dark, because it has established that. I have that. the first issue, and I liked that first issue. Okay, well, there, there are 28 uh... more to collect. <laughs> Look, man, I've already... I already got fucking called out for not knowing shit about accents on my show, all right? I fucking just like, re- here's my asshole, here's your fucking uh, finger. I, bet, going, I yeah. bet you're one of the people that use the map with the US in the center and like Europe just cut in <laughs> half on either side. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, that's the correct one. <laughs> all right. Yeah, Ramby is fucking great. I'm really enjoying it. The art's uh, really strong on this one too. I definitely yeah. feel like this one has a better, um... especially like one of the first few pages when it's like painted. It's got a more painted style. Yeah, I don't know how to feel about the fact that this book is um, such a big issue, and it feels like the paper is kind of flimsy. And I, I just, I, I forget that there's two stories in this, so I'm constantly like da 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 da, da and I'm like, wait, there's more. Oh, right, there's the backup story. This is that point where yeah, I wish that the there was like the backup is only part. ten pages. Yeah, only ten well, pages is like half a regular comic. That's yeah. kind of the point, though, right? Like, imagine if this was two, just like full issues in one. I feel like you could just like do cardstock cover, and then the traditional paper style in the center, yeah. and then you could have a really good uh, comic book. I, I don't. Yeah. Know. Have it's it a, where it's it like nitpick. flips over, and the you know you flip it over, and there's the other comic and you have more done right in the center the last time i uh last time i read something like that was a supergirl red lanterns crossover there was a green lantern red lantern crossover as well wasn't there yeah that's what it was not supergirl my bad yeah Yeah, yeah, god you're really not right with anything today are you i'm not man you know what i just have you had enough enough coffee i really haven't honestly but that's okay i'm just i'm just a dumb cunt at this point normally we start (laughs) the episode and you're there with your coffee and before we start recording you're like just need to go get more coffee and then today, I've not seen you. Is that what I sound like? Do I sound that cute? Do I just like, I gotta give him coffee? <laughs> oh, he, he holds me in such high regard. I love you. I hate you. <laughs> uh, what now? You read Superman this week as well from last week. Yeah. 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 What did you think of this? It was really emotional. Yes. I was very surprised. Um, but that's what I want. That was giving me what I wanted, plus more. And I'm actually very satisfied with how this was handled because I don't want people to just pass over the fact that John has been aged up and they've completely fucking missed out on this kid's childhood. While I was reading the opening pages of this, I was like, you know what? If I was writing this, I would want them to be upset about the fact that their fucking kid, like they lost all of that kid's childhood. Like they lost a bunch of crazy years. Yeah, I think Johnson did a better job with this, with that dynamic in this one issue than Bendis did in his whole run. Like you had like the first couple of issues, but yeah. This issue just had that extra level of emotional resonance there. I absolutely agree. Now, Bendis has said multiple times throughout the years that when he leaves a book, he wants to leave it completely changed up from what it was before. Big changes, things that are well regarded within the community that people are going to say, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely down for that. Everybody that he talked to about change, you know, having Superman reveal his identity was for it. The way they said, just do it right. Um, people brought up the whole Jean Lun Yang thing. Um, they were big on uh, with Ro- what happened with Rogel's art. I don't know what the response was to John Kent, obviously. I mean, obviously, Pat Gleason is not very happy about it, but yeah, he left um, the whole company. <laughs> he left the whole company, stopped working with Bendis. Man, he must have been so fucking pissed because he should, he should have stuck with Tomasi. Those two were tight. Yeah, but. I don't know. I would say that between Tomasi and Bendis, I would say that Bendis is the stronger writer, even though I've loved Tomasi's yeah, uh, but run on. He's uh, worked with Tomasi for like 11, 12 years. Years. Yeah. Yeah. My first. And um, then he was like, oh boy, I'm going to work with a new writer. He was like, oh boy, I'm going to go work with like a new writer for the first time in years. Bendis, I'm so excited. Two issues in, I am leaving this company. I'm never coming back. Fuck you guys. <laughs> like, Bendis, I get it, Bendis yes. broke that man. <laughs> I, I understand that he probably realistically got offered Spider-Man and was like, yeah, why would yeah. I not take up Spider-Man? Are you kidding me? Spider-Man. But, but 
at the same time, it, there has to be at least some level of sourness for what he did to John Kent because that's yeah. Pat Gleason and uh, Tomasi's creation. Um, well, not their creation, but they were the ones who really built that family dynamic there and really yeah. made you love John Kent because Dan Jurgens was one who created him during Convergence. Yeah. But Tomasi was one who was like, look at this adorable kid. Don't you love him? Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of growth with like John accidentally killing that cat. Yeah, was him developing his power. It was a cat. Okay. Uh, and then like dealing with like loss of life and realizing who he was. Those scenes were are very memorable and very, very personable. And I love them. Um, I can understand like some sourness, but it's also comics and you're in that kind of industry. I don't know. I got to say, Pat Gleason on Spider-Man right now is breaking my heart because he is one of my absolute favorite artists and he's not being utilized in a way that like is... is very yeah, you good. say he was offered Spider-Man. He was offered like three issues of Spider-Man and it's done nothing. No, he's taken over as as like the main writer now, or artist, sorry. Yeah, but he only did like... Stop. He's been there for like... Something happened. I don't know why, but I stopped... Uh, my thing stopped recording entirely. One second. How long ago? Okay, I put it back on. I don't know what happened. We can just extract the audio from the video if needed. Okay. Okay. It's an awkward um, world. I'm sorry, what were we talking about? Gleason taking over as main artist on Spider-Man. I was just going to say that it's been kind of weird... My dog's okay, screaming. I'm gonna, yeah, it'll be after this. I cut it. <laughs> Clean start from now. Um, Pat Gleason being on Spider Man, I mean, he is the new, the, the head artist at this point, but the uh, the weird thing is you can very clearly see when an artist is not given enough time to put out the work that they need, and Spider Man comes out twice monthly. That's too much. That's too much for any uh, artist. Yeah. If you... he, his artwork on Young Justice was really, really good. Absolutely. It was some of the best. And his yeah. uh, Superboy was gold. Um, I finally caught up on Spider-Man right now. And I feel frustrated because he very clearly is still a good artist. But there's a lot of sacrifices made for the art because of that time constraint. And that sucks because you want your artists to be able to have that. I'm not going to be that mad if you put Spider-Man back out on once monthly. Like, go back to that. I don't care. I'm just I'm just sad to see some of my favorite artists, like Patrick Gleason, like uh, Ryan Otley, stepping away or losing some of these skills because of that issue. And I just don't, I don't think that's fair. This was a really strong issue for me. Um, I read it and I was like, man, I actually really want to continue reading this. Johnson is a fucking great writer. Like, he I really might is. In person. I, I, might, I might just be like, yeah, fucking add it to my subscription. This is great. I'm definitely like, curious. I added it after Worlds of War. I was like, I'm going to read it digitally. I'm cutting my pulls. I mean, I read Worlds of War and I was like, holy fuck, subscribe. Yeah. This, this feels to me like when I think about the 90s era of Superman, like the one that Josh has a huge collection of, like with Dan Jurgens and everything. Yeah. This feels to me like all of the strengths from that era of Superman minus all of the bads. And that's fantastic because the 90s, if you only look at the strengths for the 90s, it's great. But then you have to look at all of the rest of the bad that came with the 90s as well. That's the problem. Yeah, there's a lot of baggage there. <laughs> there's a, so much. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, you better not good. be insulting Jerkins, Tyler. That's Josh's favorite yeah. writer. I'm so sorry. Anyway, has Hello. anyone got any shout outs of the week to discuss? Of course. Yeah, I was supposed to read Origins, but I'm a terrible person and forgot. Yes, you are. Yeah, I'm sorry. Five of six. I'm, I promise I'll read six. I promise I'll read six. Yeah. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, issue four ended with them getting to the vault the where vaults. the AI was created. Yeah, if there's there's plenty correctly. of reveals uh, in this that I, I don't really know what's going on. Uh, I, I 
I kind of know what's going on, but like, they're like, you figure it out. It, it's it's more subtle than just you know. I need I need to be spoon fed information just so I'm not making the wrong assumptions. Uh, then there's you know a large battle, and then I don't know. Yeah, you're really selling this to me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like th this issue is just kind of meh. That's unfortunate. This is six issue, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't want to give away too many spoilers because Sean hasn't read it yet. You're I'm, Josh. You're you spoilers McGee. <laughs> I'm spoilers McGee. You're spoilers McGee. You you'll do a page by page read of a fucking book on the goddamn show. <laughs> yeah. You are spoilers, McGee. All right, we're, we're all bad for spoilers. Yeah, I'll send a message out. I'll be like, holy shit, this worst. happened. Yeah, I'll send like, holy shit, this happened. Wait, have you guys read it yet? You are literally <laughs> spoilers. You are, actually, I take it back, Josh. You're not spoilers, <laughs> McGee. Sean, you're spoilers, McGee. We are all spoilers, McGee, on this blessed day. You know what? I think that just through this journey, we've all discovered that spoilers, McGee, was inside all of us. It was the spoilers we learned along the way. <laughs> Uh, we had issue five of five, another issue five this week of Kick Ass versus Hit Girl. Okay. And they, they battle for all of. Who won? Um, no one won. Of course not. How long does this battle go on for? It, it's a good chunk of the comic. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. About six pages out of this. And then that's it. Uh, I think that's the end of uh, Patience's story. It looks like it's going to pass along to a different character. Okay. Yeah. That's about it. I think we're going to get, you know, a new artist, a new uh, author for another Kick-Ass series. There's not really a good resolution here. They just both leave the battle. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, Savage number two. Still oh, up right. That's book. by that guy. Yeah. Max Bemis. I about that. Uh, I love him as a just, singer, just let a songwriter, elite, the lead of the band. Yeah. Uh, everything is just so telegraphed. Like they say, it, it's not one of those, like, I say what I'm thinking. But it's like I'm just I am going to say out loud and describe the scene. I am going to hold up this microphone and then sing. Like we meet, you know, he's a 14 year old and he's meeting another, you know, genius young girl who has been brought in by this secret society of evil doctors, and she's a genius. And she's like, you know. I don't like you. And he goes, right. I am both annoyed by and very attracted to the fact that you've never heard of me. He says that aloud? Yes. That's terrible. Yeah, the... the... Oh, I, there's, I'll send you a picture of uh, this one panel. It, I laughed out loud for this. I think you'd really appreciate this, Tyler. Uh, the... Uh, you know, the guy that runs the, you know, evil bad guy initiative. What's the, what are the Project Bazaar in London? He's running through his family's lengthy uh, list of inventions they have. He's got this little gizmo. He says, this device would have turned the progeny of enemy royals into unattractive people, littering their bloodline with those who resemble American rednecks. Unfortunately, both this effort and the machine were deemed redundant, as this has been the case 75% of the time anyway. What the f who the fuck says that? Uh, well, I thought you would have found it funny. <laughs> I do. I find it funny, but I'm also like, what? who says that? What is that saying? It, it's supposed to, like, all of his inventions are just terrible and have failed. Okay. Yeah. It's it's not great. 
I mean, you're really selling it to me, man. I got to say, I'm going to go buy it up on eBay the way you're sitting it to me right now. Uh, well, tell me how you're like feeling about it. like stick to music. Do you want I to guess, I don't know. I haven't read or? his Moon Knight run. Maybe, maybe his Moon Knight run is better, but... Oh, right. He did do Moon Knight. That's so weird. Wait a minute. When did he do that? Was that 2008? No, it was more recent, like seven, 2017 or something. Yeah, I think it was okay. with the legacy stuff they did. Uh, it was uh, somewhere around issue 100, I think. Okay. <clears throat> so how do you feel about it, though? Like, Do you think that it's like disappointing or... I'm disappointed, yeah. Tell me about that. Draw upon your feelings. Give the emotion to me. To don't tell it. me. Don't tell me one thing. You're like, yeah, I'm disappointed. <laughs> tell me more, Josh. I I wanted more. I he's a great writer for song lyrics. Mm. All all the songs are bangers, you know, man. But uh, <laughs> I I don't like the style that he does for writing characters. It's I, I already to... described that he you know has them telegraph their feelings like say it out loud and yeah it's not, it's not an easy authentic. thing to translate from or to try to transition from uh, song lyrics even if there's some storytelling elements to it to an actual storytelling like panel by panel breakdown it's not the yeah. same thing you know it's I, it's like trying to ask a uh, a photorealistic artist no, to you know what? transition to neo-traditional you know uh now that I think about it, yeah, a lot of the lyrics are kind of like, you know, diary entry kind of things. Mm. But I don't know. I it's 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 kind of like if Randy Newman decided to write a comment comic. <laughs> okay. He's yeah. Just describing right. what's going on. Left foot, if everyone right, just kind of right. described what's going on. Yeah, yeah. All right. Anything else you wanted to shout out? No, that's it. Not a thick stack this week. It's a light stack. Okay, cool. Tell me uh, about Sean, Ultra Mega. Uh, I okay. didn't really read much. I read a bit of Superman Red and Blue. Bless you. Um, it was fine. Nothing stand out. Okay. Uh, I would love to talk to you about Ultra Mega. So, do you tell? I spoilers. think that there is... Spoilers. Spoilers, Mickey. Um... You know, I'm writing down spoilers, Mickey, because I just think that's funny. I'm gonna save. I'm gonna save that for us for later. They're gonna invent a character named Spoilers, Mickey. That I'm doing it right here on the show. Spoilers, Mickey. All right. So Ultra Mega starts off in a way that I thought that I was going to dislike it almost entirely. Um, it starts off in a very fast-paced. Here's the story as fast as you possibly can uh, digest it. And in some regards, that that almost immediately turns me off. Like immediately right off the bat, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like this book. And this is a big book. And I spent $7.99 on it. So I was like, oh, fuck. Well, that's unfortunate. I better but, like it. I'll make myself like it. It's not even that. Okay. So this is such a fucking manga book that I cannot yeah. begin to express to you how much Japanese style comic book telling is influenced in this like sentai you know ultraman um power rangers like you name it like all of that stuff is just right here in this book it's the story about this cosmic plague that comes down and begins to randomly infect people on planet earth and this singular man was thought to be the only person who was going to be the hero the ultra mega who was given cosmic power from these entities that are not unlike the Watcher meets the Guardians of the Universe. Um, they give individuals power based on their abilities. For this one guy, he's like a 42-year-old uh, boxer or something who was uh, unfortunately retired. And he's got a wife and a kid, and he's just trying to make everyday, make everyday uh, ends meet. There was some other kid who specialized in robotics, who also was given the power, but it was revealed that he lost his entire fucking arm. Um, another dude who like is socially inept, and after he was given the power, just kept like wandering around aimlessly, like as a homeless man. But these random 
encounters keep occurring where because he has the ability to turn into the ultra mega and these people have the ability to transition into these cosmic monstrosities their interactions with each other they're just the presence of each other causes them to ignite basically and that's what causes these fights to occur the fight sequences are fucking brutal like there's no holds no holding back whatsoever in this um like i said this story develops really fast I'm fascinated by the fact that he was just like, chapter one, we're going to do 10 fucking things in the first chapter. Um, I don't want to spoil anything to you because a, a lot happens in this. So I'm just going to say, it's not what you think it is. It doesn't go in the direction that you think it does. And it's fucking brutal. And I mean, brutal, brutal. Like, like I saw all... there was a page post on Reddit that I sent you guys. And I was like, I read that. And I was like, okay, this is going to be a book I read. It was like, yeah always people laying around unconscious and it's like what did that it's like the shock from the like the them fighting this is what happens when gods fight yeah and just that one line i was like oh shit yes like this is gonna be sick there's a there's a sequence where one of the other characters who goes ultra mega is like i can only maintain this form for so long and he does like a neon genesis evangelion like form where his mouth rips open and he's like starts screaming dude the stuff that happens in this, you're just like, calm down, man. Like, you don't have to do this much in a single book. I'm not even kidding, dude. Like, you cannot even begin to imagine the stuff that happens in this friggin' book. Like, one guy gets his head completely ripped the fuck off, and blood spills out of him like a flood, drowns the city, the blood coagulates, and the people drown in coagulated blood. Like, it's fucking brutal. Brutal with an umlaut. It's so edgy. But goddamn it, I'm it fascinated. Irreverent? Yeah, I would. I would definitely. Okay, you remember that Pacific Rim? Yep. Imagine that cranked up to like 20. Like all of the yeah. crazy nonsensical stuff that you would find in like a Godzilla yeah. film times a thousand. Would you call it like a send up of like the big monster battle genre? absolutely and this guy very clearly is a huge fan of kaiju films and a huge fan of japanese culture like pop culture in general because there's like there's not a single thing about this that does not feel like a uh, gigantic like i love this stuff like this was like i love this here you go fuck you and here's it it's just like <laughs> he wrote it down on his face is like a love letter he's like here's your love letter and then just fucking just beats the shit out of you while he's delivering it to you it's intense. And if you don't like it for the story, you're going to love it for the art. The art sequence, like in every fucking panel, the parts where the guy is, you know, naked in the street, just like a giant head and his, his head's trying to like reshape itself back to normal. The sequences where the mom is feeding the baby and she's just looks exhausted. The really intense detail in every single vein and swoosh of a punch or a kick the the wording of things it's just very unique it's a very very out there it's very um uh camp in some regard and i think that that's one of the reasons why i love it so much i wouldn't say that this is like an a plus comic starting out but it's a damn good first start and i'm definitely fascinated to see because it's only got a couple issues that are going to be coming out i think it's like five issues maybe less than but it's huge bucks. It's huge. You think the rest of them are going to be double sized? Oh God, I I hope so. I I I hope so. I don't want them to be regular sized at this point. I'm invested in them being that size now. Well, we can yeah. check live on air. Live nah. On you know what it makes me think of? It makes me think of Daniel Warren Johnson. If Daniel Warren Johnson, I got that vibe from a, as well. Yeah, like even down to the art style. If, if Daniel Warren Don Johnson did a book and was like, I'm going to do a kaiju book, this would be it. Uh, issue two is 44 pages. Was the first one okay. 80, something like that? Uh, 40. You're the one with the book. You tell me. <laughs> <No. laughs> well, double size would be 40. It's it's huge, dude. It's square bound. It's fucking huge. It's like Donald Trump huge. Uh, issue one was sixty six. Yeah, dude. There you Triple go. Triple size. Triple size. Have extra size. The genius. 
I would say that my only real complaint that I have about this too short is <laughs> I I would say that I I would I would just want to pull James Heron aside and just be like give me a second man I can only do so much I can only maintain this erection for so long just give me a second man come on <laughs> but I mean as a person who's a really big fan of Godzilla of kaiju films in general like i'm a huge fan of uh i grew up watching the all of the godzilla films all of the gamera films the ultraman stuff i mean that stuff just fun this is like a way more dark toned version of that and that's yeah. a lot of fun to me you got that king kong godzilla movie coming out in a couple of weeks i dude i'm so pumped for it you have no idea that is I'm a movie ready. you need to see in the theaters. It's like, nope, coming to home release on this date. It's like, I know. I It'll know. be in theaters still, too. Yeah. Like, not, they not do the side by side release. There's a couple of drive in movie theaters in my area that are going to be releasing it, but surprisingly, some of them are closing down. Yeah. I w- you would think that the businesses would be great. They open up it's... for the summer, man. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I don't get it. That being said, uh, I had a lot of fun with this. I'm definitely going to recommend people check it out. Um, if you are easily offended, don't read it. Um, yeah, that's my recommendation. Um, I'm also picking up Scumbag, by the way. I definitely think you guys have missed out on that. It's still really funny. No one cares. Fuck. Let's end the episode. <laughs> All right. And on that note, I guess we're going to call it out good. Uh, anything you guys want to say before I start doing my wrap-up? Spoilers. Fuck you. <laughs> Uh, that's our show. Thank you very much for listening to and watching the Cult of Comics podcast. If you're watching us on YouTube, gently click that subscribe button. Press that like button. Find us on Patreon for Cult of Comics at the dollar or higher level. We'll send you a kiss in the form of a telegram, handwritten, hand enclosed with pomegranate scented wax sealed on the cover. I might I'll have to myself. subscribe. <laughs> For the $5 and higher level, we will come to your home, huddle you after a fresh shower because I don't want to touch you if you've just woken up. I'll Watch look you in the eyes. Well, <laughs> I, will, I will look you in the eyes and tell you that your father was wrong about how much he hated you. I will be there for you. I'll buy you a teddy bear. No, your father was spot on with how much he hates you. <laughs> Went too easy on you, in fact. <laughs> For the $10 and higher level, we'll invite you onto the show where we'll join hands together and s- sacrifice a blood boy. For the Sean, hold my hand. Sean, <laughs> hold my hand. Why are we all doing I'm the same grab direction? Your elbow. <laughs> Everybody lock arms. Don't cross the streams. All right, now cross the streams. Uh, I'm almost there. Hang on. And <laughs> a quick shout out, special thank you to Anchor.fm for continuously supporting us and allowing us to distribute our podcast on here for free. Uh, we are also getting sponsored uh, by them, uh, which is a really good incentive for anybody getting started on creating their very first podcast. Anchor.fm will be your very first sponsor. All you got to do is just do a shout out. It's really simple. It's also awesome that it's so easy to include your RSS feed for your podcast. And then they distribute it to all the locations where you can find us, Spotify, Breaker, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Pocket Cast. It's all the podcast locations that you can find. We're there, except for Stitcher, because Stitcher sucks. Oh, right. You know what? I found out why that is. It's because Stitcher actually does premium programming where you have to sign up specifically for Stitcher. So you have to do exclusive content with them as well. Yep. Kind of like Earwolf. It's a whole thing. Anyways, if you are finding us on there, give us a follow, give us a like, give us a dollar. And thank you very much for supporting us. We appreciate your time. I'm Tyler Brown. You could usually find me on Twitter at TCH Brown, but I'm going to be suspended for the uh, unforeseen future. Yeah, I went to tag games like the other day. I was like, why isn't his name showing up? Ah, that's why. Oh. Oh. Because I I insulted, what's his name? Andrew? Philip? Philip. Philip. Philip, yeah. I you can insult tell Andrew all you like. I can't tell the pedophiles apart, man. I'm sorry. If it lives in the, does drinking a blood boy once in a while make you a pedophile? I would say that if you're it looks drinking, like he's a taking boy. like a diet blood boy. <laughs>
Diet. I'm writing that down. Diet Blood Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate you guys, but I love you at the same time. Diet uh, Blood he, he he does not look healthy. No shit. He looks like a fucking eighty thousand year old vampire. <laughs> Could be. Could be. You know what he looks like? He looks like Gary Oldman at the beginning and end of Bram Stoker's Dracula. Ooh. I was going to say maybe he was Prince Philip in Cinderella. God damn it. That's our show. Thank you very much for liking and uh, following us and watching us. I don't know why you're bothering. We're ridiculous. We're disgusting. If you don't know what a blood boy is, check out some of our previous episodes where we break down what a blood boy is. And I would also like to plug, we've done some special episodes in regard to a weekly breakdown on WandaVision and Captain Falcon, no, Captain Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Check that out as well. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. All hail. Have a great day.